What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Blue River Bow Hunting. I got a really cool uh, guest on with me this week, episode 29. Uh, Josh Morrow, the the hunt critic. What's up, man? Not much, man. Just uh, chilling. You know? That's awesome, man. You uh, you uh, getting ready for some uh, some spring gobblers? Uh, that's a very interesting question. It is very in dispute, just because the dates got pushed back for the western part of Tennessee and. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it was. It's just a fiasco. First we were going, then we weren't, then we were going, then we weren't. I mean, it won't be the end of the world if I miss it, but right now it's it's anybody's guess whether we go or not. So that's awesome. Well, we can always uh, uh, dive into some turkeys later on in the conversation, but uh, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, man. I'm I'm just Josh. I am the hunt critic on TikTok. Um, I do hunting reviews, hot takes, uh, cover controversial shit as best as i can just giving my opinion and uh i never thought i'd be here you know I never, <laughs> thought, I never thought it would take me this far but here we are man you know i'm just blessed i'm blessed to be here that's awesome man I, I really enjoy what you got going on there it's always cool to see you know uh the topics that everybody brings up and and everything like that like the other day when you did the uh the the take on the iguana hunting down in in florida that was that was really awesome man i i didn't even know that much about iguanas man <laughs> what so like I, I understand people are, are, are hunting them and everything down there but i didn't realize it that it was to that extent i guess where the population yeah, that, was that high yeah so and don't it like they're bad but pythons are worse but like iguanas uh, people have been getting on to me about i said a certain number of them are down there but that's only from studies that we can see but what they do is they like burrow underground and so they'll like destroy whole foundations of buildings under construction just because they burrow underground it causes millions of dollars of property damage and nobody's doing anything about it so now the florida wildlife commission is just kind of like okay we've had enough like if you see an iguana kill it on site like there's no because they're just the problem is they breed once a year, but they'll have like 10 to like 20 eggs in one clutch. So you get a bunch of little iguanas that, you know, have the potential to reach in adulthood. But when you already have that many, you know, it just gets worse and worse. It's like a snowball effect in a way. Right. Yeah, that's wild. I can't remember the name of the lady, but I, I watch a, a video or a channel on YouTube every once in a while, and that's her job. She goes around and people hire her to. Uh, she had like an air, uh, a high powered airsoft gun, basically yeah. picking them off roofs of houses and stuff. It's it's pretty interesting, you know. I don't. I'm I'm from Indiana, cornfields. We ain't got iguanas around here. <laughs> I hate you, man. Uh, I mean, it sounds fun. Yeah, for sure. Uh, tell us how you got started in hunting from from a young age or from – is it like oh, a, an adult young. onset type of thing? Pretty young. I had two big bursts, I guess, and I never stopped like in between these bursts. It was just levels of interest, I guess I would say. Mm -hmm. So I started when I was about five, you know, just got taken out in the blind, stuff like that, you know, super bored, did not care. Like at all, I was just like happy I was out there wearing camo, you know. <laughs> right. But uh, fast forward, I mean, I always hunted. I just didn't, I was like, eh, you know, it's just something I do. I wasn't really just like super passionate about it. And then you fast forward about my junior year of high school. And that's when I just started, like, I don't know. It just, it just hit me a different way. I just saw everything differently. And it's just been a literal obsession ever since. So, yeah, that's awesome. And I, I'm kind of the same way. I, I got introduced uh, to hunting at my dad from my dad at a very young age. And at first I really didn't care, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I can't take my game boy with me, you know, or whatever, you know, it's too cold yeah. for me. I'm not into this. And then kind of around the same time, my sophomore junior year of high school, man, it, um, I went out and, you know, when I had went before, I just wasn't seeing anything. wasn't the, it wasn't cool to me at the time. And then I went on a hunt with them, with my dad and uncle one day. And I bet we saw every bit of 30 deer and that just like, lit the the lit the spark underneath me and and yeah. it has been a literal obsession for sure ever since and you know i went from you know just bow hunting to then started hunting turkeys and then you know waterfowl and then it just snowballed now I'm do, i do a podcast and it's just like yeah. snowballed like you said and it just yeah. i love it man I, I i i i don't think i could possibly stop doing what i'm doing oh no i completely agree hell yeah man absolutely i completely understand 
definitely so like that what's the hunting opportunities in in, in tennessee like what are you hunting mostly uh private land or you hit some public um, too? you can get public or private um in memphis you really want to kind of go for private just because you know things are a little nicer although it's like finding a needle in a haystack unless you know somebody but uh public's not that bad people give public a bad rap and i don't really know why because I mean, there's plenty of opportunities and there's plenty of good deer. We have a state that's really, really, really well managed with most stuff. But, you know, the regular hunting seasons that you'd have in most states throughout the year is what we have. Just a lot of opportunities to get involved for people that aren't involved. Just kind of stuff like that. But, yeah, I love it. You know, deer, turkey, squirrels, everything. You guys have a, 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 a like a weekend hunt, right, for uh, velvet, early velvet season? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a lot. The last time I checked, don't quote me, but um, I think it's like a lottery draw. But oh, okay. yeah, uh, what's cool is this county, Shelby County, is like ground zero for CWD in this state. Oh, wow. Like we get like an early season, an extended season. Oh, it's great. I love it. <laughs> but that sounds awesome. <laughs> I did uh, I did a job in uh, in Nashville uh, several years back for uh, my work and man it seemed like I saw so many turkeys out in the fields and I think at one point your guys' bag limit was what four birds at one point yeah they moved it down I think I don't know if it's two or three I think it was three this year and they moved it down to two but it was it was I think about four a couple of years ago yeah yeah it seemed like every field that I would drive past on a couple of the highways I couldn't keep my eyes on the road because I just saw so many turkey I'm not used to that where I'm from yeah uh so let's talk let's talk some uh, some whitetails you know you you touched on the, the the public versus private sort of thing uh talk about kind of the the land that you're hunting and uh you know like the the terrain features and stuff that you got going so memphis wise i don't really hunt here anymore i kind of like to hunt in middle tennessee but the memphis hunt that i did go on for like a year um really just a big ass farm I mean, if that's if that's what we're going to call it, that's really what it is. Just food plots, stuff like that. The deer really mm-hmm. just key in on that versus where I hunt in middle Tennessee, a private property. It is just nothing but woods. And I mean, nothing but thick, nasty shit that deer like to be in. And that's, what <laughs> right. I like be, you know, right. But Memphis is a lot of hell. I mean, I used to hunt my neighborhood. If I walked outside, I'll do it on a live one day, but I'll stand in my driveway and I can go, yeah, you see those trees back there? That's where I used to bow hunt, like right there. I had a girlfriend whose dad just happened to own that lease, like pure luck. But, you know, it's fucking cool. Yeah. But, um, and he had leases all over. But a lot of it is like kind of like what Seek One did. It was like really right up against the suburbs. So it was kind of cool. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how Memphis was at least. There's a one or two leases I, I was on that were just, you know, huge, huge, huge food plots. I mean, just – where we dove hunt is where we deer hunt out there, you know, like just cut down sunflower fields, stuff like that. And then moved up to middle Tennessee. And then I just started hunting hard out there. And now I'm just surrounded by oaks all the time instead of open fields. And honestly, I prefer that a lot more. Yeah, for sure. I, especially early on, early on here in Indiana, when we, we can hit those oak flats, you know, or, or near oaks, man, early season, bow season, you can, I like to, to, to go for after does early season i like to get my does out of the way get my meat in the freezer and then start chasing some horns and yeah. man if you're on one of those oak flats man you can absolutely clean up on some does especially evening hunts if you can sneak in there real quiet without really uh interfering too much you can absolutely murder on some some oaks oh yeah what about uh stand wise what kind of stands you 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 messing around with you more like a hang on type of guy climber um i like ladder stands people give me shit for that all the time but they work i mean i've probably hunted in every kind of stand you can imagine besides it i guess a saddle i'm trying Mm -hmm. that one out this year though same my preferred method is just sitting my ass on the ground next to a tree and just waiting like don't get me wrong i love being up high like i think it's cool and all but there's just something about you just can't beat being on the ground right at their level that's just how i prefer to hunt though a lot, and I've heard that from uh, from a lot of people. I actually killed uh, my first deer um, from the ground this past year in Ohio. I went over there with some buddy on some public land and actually had a, a malfunction with my climber the first day I was there. So I was 
kind of screwed and luckily i knew somebody over there that hooked me up with the climber but uh we were walking in so deep i was like one day i was just like ah screw it i'm gonna hunt from the ground tonight end up shooting a six pointer over in ohio you know and i was like this could be cool i could see why people like this because yeah. it's kind of like right up in your face you know especially yeah. bow hunting uh, yeah. but it's definitely a different different aspect than than being high i prefer to be to be in a stand and uh, to piggyback what you what you said, the, the saddle thing, I, I'm super excited about it this year. I, I pretty much already have my setup together, uh, ready to rock. I'm, I'm after turkey's over with. I'm going to get out in the yard and practice with it and whatnot, but uh, and, and do some YouTube stuff, kind of learning how everything's going. But I can't be more excited about that. Just the mobility of it. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm ready to, to chase some big big bucks out of them saddles. Oh yeah. No, the only thing that scares me about saddles is the wind, you know, just don't hunt on a windy day. <laughs> right. Just so many horror stories. The dudes look like they're aerial silk dancers just swinging around. <laughs> the That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Except for when you have a $1,500 camera right there beside you, that probably wouldn't be the funnest thing to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. What about scouting wise? What, uh, what do you do to scout uh, for deer out there? Drive around big empty fields slow down uh let's see i don't know I, mean, I'm, I don't think i'll catch you for this it's not like i spotlight or anything drive around, <laughs> at night, drive around at night a lot and just where they're at where i i don't want to give all my methods away but <laughs> where they're at where i kind of watch them they stand close enough to the road where if i just you know if i'm on a backcountry road and there's no one out there i just turn my brights on and i just see just a bunch of sets of eyes and i'm like okay and i'll just sit there and watch them but that's honestly what I do more than anything is just driving around, driving around. And then if I'm on like a piece of like private land, walking it, I mean, walking it and walking it thorough, you know, every, every out, finding where they're at, finding where they're bedded, where they're getting watered, almost damn near just mapping them out on a big, like Google earth type deal. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh, here they come this way. Well, at this time they're over here patterning them out as that's kind of my favorite way to scout deer. Do you, you, have, you use any trail cams or anything like that? Uh, every now and again, I get the shitty ones from Walmart. So I, <laughs> right. But they work. I mean. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I learned the hard way. I never put a timer on them, like the correct time. So I just have deer like coming out at certain times. I was like, well, he's coming out at night in this one. <laughs> right. But I had no idea whether it was like middle of the day, morning, late evening. And so then I had to like figure that out the hard way. But it was cool. It was cool in the end. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you on, on the Walmart cam. I have a few, um, I think we have four, uh, of the cell links or whatever from spy point, mm -hmm. but, uh, it kind of reminded me of my neighbor. We, I, I help him a lot and he hunts with, with me and, uh, we go set trail cams and he's literally got like two backpacks full of trail cameras and, and they're all a little bit older, but I'm like, do you have the time set on this thing? He's like, Oh no, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. It's either day or night. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's cool too. You know, but you know, when it starts getting, you know, a little closer to season, I like having that, 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 the time on there for sure. You yeah. know, if you're trying to catch one in daylight hours, it's good to know exactly what time he's rolling through there. Yeah. I had one like that. I think my, I just had, this year was the first year I was really using trail cameras. I don't, I wasn't really a big fan of them, but I was like, ah, eh, fuck it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a pretty good size buck. He was two years old, but the rack he had on his head, he'd have been awesome, but I didn't give a fuck. I was like, I want him now. Like, he just was that deer for me, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> I had him coming in. It was a really weird spot where I hunted. I had like five or six bucks that would have like this little, like, hundred yard range that they wouldn't go into each other's turf like they were all just like it was weird i've never seen deer do that before because they weren't running with each other they were like this is my spot this is my spot like i've never seen that and so there was this one that i really really wanted and so i was like fuck it i'm gonna go because there was a water tub that the previous landowner had like put in there for the deer and i was like that's what he was doing he was there was that and a little persimmon sapling that he was literally it wasn't growing anymore because he licked it just raw at the top of it like <laughs> just straight up and this was in like september like you know and uh i figured fuck it i'm gonna put a ground blind in here and i'm gonna shoot this motherfucker with a crossbow <laughs> at 20 yards from the, these trees and he's gonna be drinking water and not even know i'm there and then i uh i put it in there like way too late like way too like september mm -hmm. and that fucking deer just went am i like never saw him again just spooked the shit out of him and then i had another one that was showing up 100 yards up a ridge He's super wide. I mean, 20 plus inches wide. And he was, but he was wow. thin. 
But he was just, you know, that was more closer to the rut. But he was just a nighttime, you know, traveler, I guess. Mm-hmm. He didn't he didn't make a long lasting appearance. But you know, Tennessee's not really not really known much, you know, it's not really high on that list for, for whitetail hunters. What's yeah. a, what's an average deer look like in, in Tennessee? A really good deer would be like 130. A great deer would be obviously, you know, like a, a booner or something like that. But right. most of them are just kind of like basket racks and stuff like that. I, I don't think it has anything to do with genetics. I just think it's how heavily they're hunted or just where they happen to be. The big ones, I put it like this, because obviously there's different subspecies of whitetails. But mm-hmm. there's Virginia whitetail, which is like most of Tennessee is that subspecies then right at memphis there's kansas whitetail which get big but they don't get as big as like the northern ones you see in ohio canada places like that mm-hmm. but <laughs> i call them uh down here because these virginia whitetail don't get very big i mean they just don't they just don't have the genetics yeah. but uh, i call them pamela anderson deer so they have <laughs> little bodies and just really big racks <laughs> that's pretty funny but um you know it's a good state it's just a matter of finding where the good deer are do you think the you know like how much ag are they around? You think maybe ag has anything to do with some Probably some of their lot. genetics? Probably a lot. Um, I know in my area. So like the reason I and I know this for a fact. People are arguing me all the time, but the reason they get so big down here in just this Memphis kind of area, not really the rest of the state. You don't see it as much. But down here is because the Mississippi River's right there. Our soil's black when you pull it out of the ground. So there's so mm-hmm. much nutrients in there from the river. They just, it just, I don't know, it just the, goes to their antlers, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm with you. You know, uh, I've talked in length on here before about Mississippi Deer River, or Mississippi River Deer, sorry. Uh, you know, the, the, the biggest county in the United States is uh, Buffalo County, Wisconsin, and it is literally smack dab on the Mississippi River. There's something in that soil to get those deer that big because you don't just shoot that many uh, Pope and Young and Boone and Crockett's all in the same county for no reason. Yeah, yeah for sure. What about like uh, states that you would like to travel to and, and do some whitetail hunting? Um, Illinois. That's a pipe dream right now just because how expensive Illinois is. Illinois, Iowa. Um Maryland, I heard, is pretty good. I just want to see what the hell's out there, honestly. Like, <laughs> um, Wisconsin, definitely. Even going out of the states and going up to like Saskatchewan, somewhere like there, I want to check that out. Or Alberta, um, Ohio, I've been to that. I just I just go there every year. Indiana, Indiana, I heard they have pretty good deer out there. Absolutely, um, Kentucky. Louisiana, maybe really just hell everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. how I am too. Yeah. Uh, this year is going to be my first year putting in for uh, the preference points in Iowa, so I'm going to start doing that. So sooner or later, I'm going to be able to do that. Um, in, I've hunted Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Uh, if you ever get the chance to do that, it's absolutely insane, man. I, I, I've whitetail hunted since I was 12, 13 years old, and I've never seen that many deer and that size of deer just consecutive days the first day i sat in the stand i saw 30 plus deer i saw three three to four deer that were shooters 130 plus and it was just it's, I mean, all day long and this is the last week of october and it was the high was 17 degrees and there was snow on the ground in late october which i don't get that where i'm from yeah. so the weather was a little different but there's definitely I, I i i checked ohio off the box last year it was pretty fun um Illinois uh, almost became a reality for this coming season. Um, kind of got the hook up out there, but you're the hunt critic. I'm going to ask you ask you this question: What do you think about states that jack up prices for non-resident hunters? I think it's smart, business wise, fucking ingenious. Right? <laughs> uh, seriously, especially no, I'm with you. Iowa, where you got to put in a preference point. You can't just go. You know, that is the probably the best way to rake in money for conservation which sucks and it's a monopoly but it works you know right. I think it's business wise fucking incredible hunting wise i hate it but <laughs> right. i understand why they're doing what they do i think some states are better at it than others obviously yeah. you know like illinois if you want to go over there and get after a whitetail with your bow you're gonna pay 700 dollars or so just for the tag yeah. you know i paid 250 in ohio which i didn't think was too bad kentucky i think it's like 375 
I don't know what Iowa is yet, um, but I have to pay you know sixty dollars for preference points for three to four years before I can even obtain okay. obtain that you know that tag. Uh, I got drawn for a, a non-resident Michigan turkey private land tag uh, for this coming spring. I'm going to be going there in a few weeks, and I think my my tag's like 150 bucks. So I know some states you know will obviously jab you because. They have that many people coming in. Like you said, it's genius. If you have, you know, thousands of people that come to your state every year and you jack it up to seven fifty, eight hundred dollars $800, you are making some bank. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't right. you? They're going to come anyway, you know? And that's, that's the security and the insurance they get with doing that is they do just have the deer like that that people want to harvest. Yeah, absolutely. What about, uh, what about turkeys? I, I asked you a little bit earlier about turkeys. Uh, is it something that you you chase every year, or is it not something? Really. Not really. If I'm if I'm being serious, it yeah. just I always and I hate it. I mean, it just always gets that time of year when I get really busy, mm-hmm. and so I just this year I was supposed to get. Like I said, it's a fiasco. So it just always something always fucking happens during turkey season, and then honestly, I just kind of put them on the back burner anyway, and people get pissed at me saying that. <laughs> I mean, it's your preference. It's it's what you want to chase, you know. It's it's not the end of the world to me just because I'm like, there will always be turkeys. And some guys love it, and I think that's great. And I kind of like hunting turkeys. I just don't have the time to just go do that. Like, most of my year culminates around, okay, September, October, November, December, let's go hunt deer, versus, like, I don't really have the time in March, April, you know. Right. But – if I have the opportunity, I always try to go, but if I don't, I just don't. And I don't, you know, it wouldn't be like, if you told me this year, I wasn't going to deer hunt, I'd, I'd fucking cry. <laughs> yeah, I I'm would like, find what? a way to deer hunt. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Like, it, it wouldn't matter. But like turkey season, I just, one of those things and I kind of hate it, but I just always come to terms with them. Like, yeah, I'm just probably not going to do that this year, but working to correct that in the future, I guess, get myself in a position where I can. Definitely. I take a week off every year for, um, for deer and then a week off every year for Turkey. So I kind of spread it out as much as I can, but if I had to choose, I'm absolutely putting those days off in deer season. Uh, speaking of that question, is there, is there a certain time? Is there a sweet window or a week or, you know, maybe just a certain day on the calendar that you circle, you're like, I'm going to be in the deer stand right then. Um, Hmm. This year was this past year was cool because opening day was on my birthday, which I thought was badass. I was like, this is sweet, but uh, it usually isn't on my birthday. So I think I don't, I wouldn't have a, if it were a day, it would be my birthday if I was allowed to go. But hmm, um, time wise, I don't know. I really like, and a lot of people get pissed. I kind of like after the rut, like the two, three weeks way after the rut when they're mm-hmm. just fucking exhausted and then they're like coming out in food uh, sources yeah. <laughs> when they're just they've exhausted everything they're just they're defeated and you can see it in them it's the kind of like they start the season they got like this unbreakable spirit they just keep eating keep eating and then the rut comes they're invincible and then after they're just broken right after <laughs> that. like honestly that's the best way i could describe it but i something about that i just like hunting them I de- it's definitely a, a time to be in the woods around here because after like you said when they post rut and you know they're trying to get that fat back on them it you'll see 50 deer in a field it ain't no problem <laughs> to see that many you know i mean our, our our indiana deer herd is definitely um down compared to what it has been but if you look in a cornfield at dark in indiana somewhere after about that time you're going to see plenty of deer in the field oh, yeah. but but for some reason, uh, October 27th is my day. I've killed uh, multiple deer, big deer on that day. Just happened to get lucky, I guess, and killed them the same day. But that uh, a lot of people will say that first week in November, first week in November. You know, first week in November here, uh, the big bucks are, you know, they got these does on lockdown. And you really, there's only a couple of hours during the day that they're really even going to be moving. So I yep. like the pre-rut action. Probably personally is probably my favorite when everything, yeah. you know, one. chasing and all that. Yeah. Now, fuck, I'll take it back. I like whenever I'm hunting, it, there's never X amount of time. I'll just try to go as much as I can. But the last day. I will fuck up all season long and just so many, so many things go wrong that last day, 
something always happens the last day. So I take that back. It's always the last day I hunt. Is something <laughs> crazy happens. That's my favorite day. That's awesome. So how did your 2021 deer season go? How did it pan out? Um, for you? It was a comedy of errors. Um, I didn't really hunt hard in tennessee didn't harvest in tennessee i'll I'll be the first to admit that you know i call myself the critic but i'm not like (laughs) i'm not the best hunter there ever was fuck i'm pretty shitty at it if i'm being honest but uh the big the big event the one i'll tell a story about the the only one worth telling a story about was uh ohio gun season opening of gun week and so Ohio's great when you go for a gun because that first day, everybody and their mother is driving. Like everybody, you know, they're, everyone wants to push deer through the woods. So we always are like, well, let's just go fucking sit. Let's go lean up against a tree like a turkey hunting and let everybody else do the work for us because the deer are already going to be paranoid as shit. So <laughs> we're just waiting, you know. Saw a lot of good deer, got really selfish, really. So I saw this one nine, me and my partner were walking in, just going to go sit down. And I don't know what the fuck happened. Supposedly it was, they were starting a second rut. So maybe that's what it was. And this buck just got interested, but this really nice nine basically followed us all the way into where we sat down. It was basically there, but I was sitting against a tree like this. I couldn't turn because I didn't want him to see me. And you know, there's leaves everywhere. I didn't like clear it out before I sat down. Mm -hmm. Comedy of errors. And so I was like, man, fuck. And so he was standing ass backwards to me. And I was like, do I take this? I was like, as much shit as I talk on the internet this <laughs> right now, do I? And I just, I opted not to, but it was cool. Cause then like that morning I had a little eight point come fuck five yards from me. And he's sitting there licking his nose, trying to catch my wind. Thank God the wind was blowing in my face. I was like, he's cause he knew something was wrong. He just couldn't figure out what, but he was also like two years old. He's just sitting there going like this. And I was like, motherfucker, I'm like, please, please. I'm like, God, don't let the wind turn, you know? But that was a cool experience. But uh, all week, getting my ass kicked by these deer, being the selfish bastard. And the last day, I promised myself, I said, you know, just shoot whatever comes out. But whatever first year you say, I don't give a fuck, just shoot it. You know, we got shit we got to do. We, we're not going empty-handed this year. And so that week – the second drive we would always go on when we did start driving. Cause you know, after the first day they'll move around, but that second day you got to kick them in their ass from the stand up. They're not, they're just not going to get up. And so all week I had been at the bottom of this hill and this hill had 15 yards to a, a fence and then an open pasture. And then there was a Creek and then there was the other field, another farmer's field, the neighbor. And then it was a steep hill. So it was like this on the other side. And above that was like another hill and another hill, a series of fucking hills. It's Ohio. And so (laughs) all week in front of me, kind of like I'm standing in between where this ridge drops and then this, this little gap. And right in front of me is this brush pile that you just cannot see through. And all week these deer go like this, they go and they run and I can't see them in the brush and they jump out of the brush. They jump right over the fence. They go in the pasture and they're gone. And I'm like, man, fuck you. Like, you know, <laughs> just pissing me off, honestly. You know, it, it'll wear you down. You just keep seeing deer run past you, and you literally can't do anything about it. Yeah, it'd be tough. And so I'm watching this all week, all week. I'm like, so then we get to the, the drive, second drive in the morning. Didn't see anything on the first drive, which was weird. And uh, I get down there, and I just hear, <laughs> I'm like, fuck. And I see in this real thick, but I'm far down enough in the hill kind of like cuts in the middle where I can see up at where someone else is standing, but they're not going there yet. You know, I'm sitting there 30 minutes where anyone else is driving because I'm at the very, very bottom and everyone has to group together, all this stuff. But I see this coyote and I'm like, you son of a bitch. I'm like, my, you know, the drive is going to get ruined. That's what I was afraid of. I was like, they're going to, you know, because I'm just have so many doubts. I'm like, the deer are going to smell it. I'm fucked. And so then I, I figured because the, the year before I had a similar situation, a coyote came down there. I'm like, boom, missed. He ran up the hill, boom, missed again. He ran up the hill, got to the top of the ridge, boom, and he just went, <laughs> just you know, rolled. But um, I thought that's was going to happen because that's usually what happens down there. And he never showed up. So I was like, fuck, you know, I was kind of just more looking for him than I was deer at that point because I figured I was screwed, like literally. And 20 minutes after that, I look in the pasture and I just see, fuck is that it's a dog standing down in the middle of the pasture and i'm like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> like i'm like this is this is i'm cursed like this is it like i 
why? Like, you know, just sitting there like questioning everything. And so then 20 minutes passed after that. I mean, I probably was down there maybe 45 minutes before they even really started driving. And then like 10 minutes into the actual drive, I'm standing there and I hear boom at the top of the hill. I'm like, oh shit. You know, you hear a gunshot, you put your shit up. You know, somebody might've missed. And so uh, I'm getting excited. I got my gun up, I'm ready. And I hear, and I'm like, oh, you know, I can hear them. And I figured, okay, they're going to jump over the thing. Uh uh. They ran with the gate and turned in front of me. And so it's these two does, and this one does fucking huge. And I'm like, okay. And I look behind her and I'm like, okay, they're about the same size. This is fine. She's, they're running full clip too. You know, that ain't, you know, this is happening in all in 10 seconds. First one gets in front of me. The second one I see, I go, hey, boom. And then I like, I've never hit a deer full clip just because I don't like, you know, mistakes. Right. And so I, shoot the gun and all i see is just just this just <laughs> fucking hell with the dirt and i was like son of a bitch i was like i got, <laughs> I got her and i was just shocked you know and the two three seconds went by felt like about 20 or 30 and then she got up and she went uh, i hit her too far forward i just broke her shoulder and so i'm like man fuck so i'm like boom and so in that time period, it wasn't 10 seconds between the person above me is shooting and me shooting. And my dad is on the hill above everybody else. And he just hears what's down at the bottom. So he's thinking he's hearing boom, boom, boom. He's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? He thought I was going to war with the deer at the bottom. You know? <laughs> and I'm sitting there. And I, I finished that dough off, which was good for me. I never had that happen where, you know, you got to go back and put another round in them. But I did. I'm glad it happened. And, I'm more of a mature hunter now. You know, it's something I I didn't want to happen, but I knew it was going to happen eventually, and I'm so I'm glad it, it did then. But uh, I'm sitting there looking at it, and I'm, like, staring at this doe. I'm like, hmm, she doesn't look as big as I remember. <laughs> and I get, I get walking up closer to her and come to fucking find out it was a yearling. I'm surprised this thing didn't have milk on its lips. Um, <laughs> had baby teeth. I'm like, please don't be a button buck. Please don't be a button buck. And I like lifted. I was like, thank God. Like, thank you. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. it would have felt bad. But, uh, you know, they ended the drive, saw a couple more deer, and uh, we were cleaning it out. And that's when everybody decided they're going to start fucking with me. They were like, man, that's uh, sure that's not a dog. Like, I was like <laughs> yeah, fuck, it could have been, you know. And, um, we cleaned it out. I think she was like 70 pounds fully cleaned out. And that was the first year. Dragon deer fucking sucks. Yeah, it does. It blows. But this is the first year ever I went. I've got all four of her legs in one hand and went. And just <laughs> pick her up and put her in the back of the side by side. And people were fucking with me. They were, I had my car hearts on. And they were like, oh, you want to put her in the front pocket where your dip goes? I was like, hey, fuck <laughs> off. Like, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, she was just real little, real, real little. There was like no, there was no front shoulder left. Like it was, just oh, gone. I just annihilated it with a twelve gauge slug. And so, we get to the top of the hill. We went and took it to the processor. I ended up getting like the smallest deer of the day. <laughs> That's awesome. Of, you know, I was proud of it. I was like, damn, this yeah. is the most tender venison I've ever had in my life. Absolutely. <laughs> I, my dad was the only positive one. Everybody else wanted to give me a hard time. My dad was like, well, if you think about it, you're actually a better shot because it was a smaller target. I was like, I guess, man, shit. <laughs> like, that was that was my the, – the literal highlight of just the season. You know, most people brag about 200-inch deer. Yeah, fuck that. I shot a yearling. And I'll, <laughs> right. yeah. At least you're real about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I get on people's ass, you know. And the last thing I want is for someone to be like, oh, well, I found out he shot a yearling and didn't tell anybody. So it's better to just be upfront and honest about it from the get-go. No, oh, definitely. And like you said, you, you, you learn from, from everything that happened, shooting too far forward and all that kind of stuff. And just, you know, sometimes it, it can be more of the adventure than really what you take home in the back of the truck that day. And I look at it like that half the time, yeah. you know, like you said, you know, she looked a little bigger than, than yeah. what I thought, you know, yeah. that happens to me quite a bit. My oh, neighbor yeah. gives me a lot of shit. Uh, the deer I shot this year, he was probably around 115 inches or something like that. Bow kill. And we got up to him. He was like, I thought you said you shot a giant. <laughs> I was like, I thought I did. Yeah. You know, it just happened so fast. And I, I was so, my adrenaline was so 
pumping and i don't oh, know absolutely. i don't it's give definitely. nobody shit about anything that they shoot you know yeah. if, if that's the only thing you ever wanted to shoot i still wouldn't give you shit because you probably still had the time of your life doing it yeah it's i mean it's somebody's tag it's their hunt uh, the only thing i can imagine that's worse than uh having ground shrinkage is just missing because then they fucking grow by about 100 inches every time <laughs> right. but um yeah that's awesome man so let's uh let's dip into a little bit of this uh social media kind of stuff. Uh TikTok, man. It seems like you you got it figured out on the old TikTok uh with the with the videos that you're doing and everything. Talk a little bit about how it all started and how you started the Hunt Critic. By chance. Um Reed DuPont posted a video saying high fence isn't real hunting. And I was like, it's not, you know. And, <laughs> right. Uh, I was like, I watched a video of a dude saying something about it. And I was like, he didn't say enough. I could say more. And so I was like, I'm going to just try this. And um, it was like three in the morning in my apartment, a little one bedroom apartment. Everybody's sound asleep. The dogs are asleep. My, my girlfriend at the time was asleep. And I went in the bathroom, snuck in my bathroom because I was like, it's the only place I can kind of go and you know, <laughs> maybe be loud. And, um, if I just close all the doors, you know, and I put a towel under the door, you know, all this. <laughs> shit. And, um, I just made a video. I just was like, this is fucked. Like, I don't get this. I, you know, maybe it's not fucked, you know, to each his own. If you enjoy that, I don't understand why, but right. <laughs> you do you, man. And so, um, I just, man, I don't know. I just kind of just gave my, my two cents. on. I was like, I just don't get it. You know, and I held on to it. And the next morning I had it and I said, Hey, uh, can I, should I post this? And my girlfriend at the time was like, yeah, fuck it. Just do it. And I was like, yeah, but what if, what if, you know, I'm going to call myself this, you know, and I had already had the name for like a while, but it wasn't going to be what it is now. It was going to be like man on the street interviews, like Billy on the street, but it was yeah, right. asking people about hunting, like just, you know, and she was like, yeah, just fuck it, post it anyway. And I was like, okay. And we went to the land that day, and I did not look at my phone. And then I looked at my phone, and it said, you have 11,500 views on this one video. I was like, son of a bitch. I was like, <laughs> hey, I was just shocked, you know. And um, I don't know. It's like people – I think when I first started, and, and people that have been with the account before even it hit 10K, you, then you know how I was when I first started versus what we do now. It's complete 180, an attitude at least. Well, maybe not. But um, <laughs> I used to not be above like responding to people that would comment because I think that replying with a video is God's gift to humanity. Like, <laughs> because I would just talk mad shit back at these people. I was like, you want to talk shit at me? Let's go, you know gloves are fucking off you know <laughs> and so i would just say whatever the fuck like just didn't care because i i didn't know you know and um kind of after that about two or three videos just slandering high fence on it just fucking destroying people about it just getting them people's ass um people start asking me other questions and they're like okay well what do you feel about hunting with dogs and i was like hmm I, I really thought about it. I was like, you know, a lot of people don't like it, but I was like, I've watched a few guys on here on the app, and I was like, I really do enjoy what they do. It can't be fucking easy. It has to cost money. You know, all these things went in my head, and I was like, there's a lot of hound hunters on this app. I was like, if I can kind of get them behind my back, let's see what we can do. And so I said, yeah, you know, they get more shit than anybody in the communities because people bitch, oh, Oh, the hound hunters, the reason we don't kill big deer. Like, no, that's not the reason at all. You know? <laughs> and so I made that video and then I had the hound hunter support. And then it was just leave me a question. Ask me what you want. Y'all want to see next and tell me what you think about it. And getting that conversation opened for hunters that disagree with each other, even if it was a little uh, aggressive at first. <laughs> but uh, it just kind of literally and I hate to say it because it seems like a fairy tale, but like it just picked up overnight and it just I, I remember when i wanted to start i was there were so many times and so many nights i would stay awake and i was like what the fuck am i gonna do because i knew i had something with the name i was like that's it, like because in the outdoor world if something has a name it's already taken like you come up with a name it's already gone definitely and so i was like no one has this name i was like i got it like a kind of cool name and uh i just remember sitting up at night going how am i going to be different 
how am I going to set myself apart? How am I going to just step out from the crowd? Why are people going to listen to what fucking I have to say? This fucking broke kid in college. And on its own, unintentionally, it just kind of took off. And it yeah. just, there was nothing, which is, I don't mean to sound like vain. I hate sounding that way. But there's just, there's not anyone else that does it. Like, it was just kind of like it was unheard of. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. You know, I'll do it. <laughs> right. yeah here we are i'm just i'm blessed i'm blessed to be in the position i think what what brought me what made me pay attention to it is just you giving people shit which is what i find very comical i think probably a lot of people like that too you know yeah. i think it's fucking hilarious yeah i mean these people would just just come at me sideways and i'd be like okay right, you know, <laughs> right. and that was my motto it still is don't get me wrong there's some things that will never change but i'm a little more refined now but uh my motto was and it'll always be i don't fucking care if you have one follower i don't care if you have a million if you do something and i don't fucking like it or someone says hey do you want to talk about this yeah gloves are all like let's go like i don't <laughs> care like because i don't i just i feel like if you're afraid to and that's maybe why I, maybe I don't know maybe why I found success is because there's a lot of hunters that are really really scared to just cover these topics that other people just kind of you know don't talk about. And I was like, yeah, fuck that. I'm going to talk about this. You know, someone got to say something. And I think that's just part of a big key among many many other things of just why I'm here. You know, that's awesome, man. How, how, a question that I have for you is yeah. how do you 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 got to have thick skin at some point in this, in this venture that you got. How do you deal with people that you just, some people that would just absolutely tick you off. I don't think I could handle it in certain, because you Man. know, like one video that I put up and it was a video that I worked very hard on. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the messed up part, not on TikTok, but on YouTube. Uh, my Wisconsin deer went up there, self filmed myself killing a, a, a decent and pretty nice buck, you know, up Good. in the snow and stuff. And uh, my, it was so cold. I was telling you, it was 17 degrees was the high, you know, and I hunted all day. And uh, my battery, my second battery actually went dead oh. in my camera after I shot the deer. So I, I didn't really get to do a recovery. recovery. So, like, at the end of the video, it's just pictures with me with the deer. And I had people comment that you should put this on there. You should put it on there. I just wanted to, like, absolutely snap because they have no idea the hours I put into editing videos and just being in the stand for 12 hours. They don't understand that, you know. Yeah, that's – I'll put it to you like this. So, like, I had the luxury of um, never doing actual hunting content, sitting in a bathroom, which is the safest place you can be on this app because if you show <laughs> anything with antlers, you're gone. Like especially right. just the way TikTok wants to do stuff, the way big tech wants to do stuff, they don't want our community there anymore. They're not supportive of it. Never have been. Never will be. Maybe one day it'll change, but I don't. I don't see a future for that. You got to find a way to stay and outsmart whatever algorithm you're on. And so, uh, I uh, when I like I said when I first started, people would just say dumb shit, and I'd be like, all right, you know, I, I was, I'm kind of a smart ass if you get to know me. And so um, I did not shy away from responding to people because I was like, all these big creators, they don't respond to people. I was like, I'm going to respond to people. They're going to, I'm going to make them mad. You're going to come after me. I'll come after you too. Like, fuck <laughs> it. like and um, I, I'll say this. I think the most, I caught a few comments here and there. It wasn't until the headshot video that I was just getting like, just fucking hated. Like, <laughs> which I kind of liked. I kind of like that. I used to joke and, you know, I, like I said, I don't like having a, like a big head or anything. I just like, I think it's funny is, um, I like to call myself the Thanos of the outdoor TikTok community. <laughs> like, fuck it. Like, you know, I'm I, just a villain, just hunting's villain. Like, yeah. and I really don't care. And, um, I've seen a lot of comments that are like the same, like, you don't know enough about hunting to be a critic and like bullshit like that. But you usually get the same stuff. Like people are not that smart as you think they are. Like they'll just comment the same thing, like different people will. So you get like the kind of the same comments, but every once in a while you'll get someone that's just, you'll get it like a, a, an artist, like that will just insult you in a way that you've never been insulted before. And you're just like, fuck. Like I think <laughs> when I first started, it used to wear me down, 
like he's like man fuck you know like i'd get like sad and shit i wouldn't let anybody know that but like, <laughs> like man fuck like that kind of hurt my feelings and i that and then responding to people and then i realized that um if you just don't respond to them because that's what they want is no, absolutely you just don't respond to them unless it's something that's just like you got it like like there's that's me when i do like videos i'm like i can't help myself like i just have to say something and there's comments that are like that too but a lot of ignoring them and then just honestly just like being like yeah well if you don't like me go fuck yourself this is my opinion <laughs> like that's that's what the thing is based off of i try to put as many facts in there as i can to kind of back up my opinions but at the end of the day this is this is me this is what i think you know if you don't like it I'm, i hate it for you but you know i think that's i mean as much as people probably hate it uh that attitude you know isn't there's nobody with that attitude in the 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 outdoor community i mean there might be behind closed doors but they're not really going to say it to your face so i think you having that attitude towards people is is refreshing because sometimes I can have that attitude, but I don't let it come out. You know what I mean? I try to be nice for the most part. So I don't know. It's, it's different kind of platforms, I guess, you know, Mm -hmm. like a, uh, a content that I create compared to like content that you create, you know, if I said that I'd probably be in the doghouse pretty quick. Yeah. Thank you though. There's, there's a good sound. I was going to post it a couple of days ago. It's like, I was going to say, what made you want to do what you do? And it's like the only way to fight a monster is to become one. Like you just have to just fuck it. Like, you know, go ahead first. Definitely. You know, like how many other hunting podcasts do you know that that's out there? There's a million of them. There's a million of them. Everybody wants to do a hunting podcast. And, And when I sat down at the end of the day and wanted to do this, I was like, I just have to make it my own. And I have to have fun with it. I'm not here to make money because you're not going to make money doing a podcast unless you have a million downloads every week. Yeah. And I just had to look on the, the fun side of things, you know. I'm going to have fun meeting people like you or, or whoever else that I have on the on the show and have fun with it. And I can't yeah. think of this any other way than just having fun with it. Yeah, and that's that goes for any any creator of any anything. Like, if I did this, and that's what I – kind of had to remind myself in the middle. I kind of got a little, a little distracted because I let the numbers get to my head. But, um, I see this problem a lot with a lot of creators. And I think I talked about, I was on another podcast yesterday. I talked about the same issue is that, um, I love the position I'm in now because I can see smaller outdoor accounts and I'm like, they're going to be fucking big. And I can just tell, I can just tell. I I used to not be able to tell, but now I'm like, they're going to be fucking big. Look, give them a month. If they just keep doing what they're doing, they just keep, you know, staying on track, they're going to get big. And I love that. But only half of them, a quarter of them actually come through because the, the number one enemy of a creator is the creator. You know, I, and I told myself that when I started this, I was like, look, we're going to do, this is about what you think. This is about just how passionate you are about this sport. This is about, you know, now later on, it's about, okay, I want to educate people. I want to spread awareness. But the minute you see a creator, and this is what I find interesting because I see it a lot. They'll have a really big video. They'll have a couple and they'll kind of start to figure themselves out and kind of get their bearings. And it gets to their head too quick way too quick. And so then it stops becoming about whatever they were doing, whatever genuine content they were creating, it becomes about them. And the minute you make it about you, you're fucked. You're done. Like you don't right. watch it anymore. And that's just the, the nature of the beast. But I, I hate seeing that on, uh, on social media because there's, like I said, I watch like a bunch of little accounts. I'm like, Oh, come on. I hope they make it through. I hope they make it through. And then a lot of them don't just because they, they just get caught up in here. So definitely, they. I think a lot of people that that try uh, to be a content creator, I think they get ahead of themselves very, very quickly. And then when they realize the the mountain that they're they're trying to climb one handed, uh, that they can't do it. I think they all just kind of give up. And, you know, I don't know how many times I've been through or TikTok or Twitter or Facebook or whatever, and you see these little accounts that that pop up and stuff like that, and. I wish them the best too, like you, like you said, uh, but they give up pretty, 
pretty quickly and uh that's not something that i have uh anywhere near what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just keep I, I, like i said i'm not trying to be famous or you know whatever i'm just um doing what i do normally but i put it out there that i that i'm doing it you know deer hunting i'm, I'm deer hunting that many days i just happen to have a camera with me while i do it you know? yeah yeah no it's and that's another thing is consistency is key you know you're not gonna you're not gonna have an account if you post one video every two weeks like you gotta you know you gotta grind that shit out and sometimes it's not fun and sometimes you know if, if this is what i like to say is it TikTok is my greatest like hobby. Maybe, you know, kind of rivals hunting a little bit, but they kind of go hand in hand. Um, if I ever like started doing videos where I was like, I just don't want to do them anymore because I like treat them like work. Cause that's another thing people do. They treat them like work. Like it's like, I'm here to have a good time. I'm here to ruffle some fucking feathers. Like, <laughs> right. you know, if I ever caught myself or if anyone ever caught me like getting to the point where I was like treating it more like it was a job versus like something that the privilege that I get to have to do this for people, I'll fucking quit tomorrow, you know, like, right. because that's just not what I'm in it for, you know, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I'm just having fun doing, doing everything. Yeah. You know, it's cool to have a, a conversation with somebody that from tennessee i'm from indiana i get to see kind of what your your views and aspects and what you got going on deer wise compared to what i do and you know i think that's why people listen to podcasts in general to, for information you know especially in the hunting community and then they try to put you know their stuff with other people's stuff and get a general idea of maybe i don't know deer hunting in general or turkey hunting or whatever so I, i'm definitely i'm with you on that man Oh yeah. So let's let's cover a couple of these topics. Let's really ruffle some feathers. Fuck I'm it. in the ruffling feathers mood now. You got me all fired up. Fuck, uh, bow hunters versus crossbow hunters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> if you shoot a compound bow, here we'll just do this just raw. Just see, that's what I think the illusion I create is that I just come up like I just speak so eloquently. Like fuck now, I got to do like hundred takes in that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to do the best I can. Um, <laughs> if you shoot a compound bow, God, I'm already doing my, like my voice. I don't know. I'm just kind of like, well, I get like, I don't know. It's, just act like, normal, man. Just have a conversation with no, me. Yeah. It's just like whenever I get into these topics, it's just like, I don't know. It's like being Jekyll and Hyde, just like a different part. <laughs> right. I mean, it's still me. But right. when you shoot a compound bow, if, if you're fucking with someone because they shoot a crossbow, um, you can get fucked. Like I really, <laughs> I really don't understand. I think it's an asinine and kind of childish attitude to look it put your nose up and look down at another fucking hunter because they're doing the same thing that you're doing in a more efficient way. When did we start getting pissed off that uh, hunting was becoming more efficient? Like what fucking sense does that make? I understand that there's, you know, there's a very fine line like i would never say to somebody ever like oh yeah uh, because i hunt compound bow i'm better than you and every deer i've ever killed is harder to kill than the deer you shoot like i wouldn't <laughs> say that because hunting is individual more than it, like yeah you can have camaraderie and shit, but it really comes down to the individual and no one's gonna have the fucking same experience no one you know you don't know what that person went through to fucking harvest. And so I find it really interesting. Like you can have the self realization that yes, it might've been harder for me this one hunt to harvest the deer I have versus this guy that shot it with a crossbow, but don't fucking say that. Like, you know, right. well, I mean, that that's kind of where I'm at with that. Like I, I get just, it. What can you imagine this conversation like back in like the seventies and eighties with like, you know, our great grandparents with red flannels in the woods, you know, at a deer camp somewhere up north or something, you know, they would have never fought, fought for that. They would have probably beat your ass. I mean, really. Dude, they'd have all adopted crossbows. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> right. Like, holy shit, you can just do this. You know, a, a lot of people are like, well, my grandpa would never. He was so ethical. My ass. If you show your grandpa a fucking crossbow, he'd be like, holy shit, give me that thing right now. Like, <laughs> right. You gotta, I mean, you got to be real. And that's what I think. That's another thing I like doing is like the hunting world is like living in fucking la la land. It is. Like, you know, you got to be real about some of this shit. So uh, yeah, that's, that's how I feel about crossbows. Um, 
I use a crossbow, so I get a little touchy feely about that subject. But I don't, I, I don't judge anybody as long as they're outdoors enjoying themselves. I exactly. could care less if you're trying to hit them with a, a nail and a hammer or something. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't care how you're doing it as long as you're out enjoying yourself. Oh yeah, this year I'm gonna get a raven. I'm gonna work wonders. Oh wonders. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You shoot absolute darts of that thing. Oh yeah. Uh, Killing for content. Fuck it. <laughs> um, it paints the most unrealistic view of the world that we we count ourselves in, the community we try to associate ourselves with. If you just kill for content, like don't get me wrong, that's great. You know, there's nothing like a good thumbnail. I, it just happens. But to me. That is why we are. We wonder and we bitch and we moan. Oh, why are we portrayed so shit like so shittily in every other media but our own? And that's people only see gripping grins. Like you know, you kind of have to take a step back and kind of understand from an outside perspective. If that's the only thing you saw with a dude smiling with a deer like this that he just harvested, now he has every right to do that, and I support that 100. Fuck, I grip and grin. Like you know, because that's a special moment. But they don't see the special moment. They just see you smiling with a dead deer. And so I really don't like creators. And there's a lot of them, there's a <laughs> lot of them that um, they kill something. Every video, they're always successful. They never fail. They have like this perfect image that they never fail. And I hate that. I'm glad you brought that, that, that topic up. Yeah, I have a video. You can find it on YouTube. We went turkey hunt in Missouri last year. Guess what it entails? Me missing. Yeah. I showed that. You know, I showed, and you, and we do an interview after I miss. You see me dejected. I could have threw up. You know what I mean? I just yeah. drove ten hours to go turkey hunting with my buddies, and I blew it on the last morning. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I but I showed it, and, and and people had asked me that. Why did you put that in there if you missed? Because I missed, I wanted you to show how I screwed it up. You know, <laughs> that's what I like seeing. I don't like this, like this. I'm this perfect hunter. I, there's, no, you know, no one's better than me. I always succeed. I always harvest because it paints a false fucking reality. And there's kids like when I was a kid and I went out for the very first time. I said, sat there for about five minutes. Was like, all right, fuck, where are the deer? Hello, you know, like, <laughs> you know, you you see deer hunter at the arcade and think that's how it is because you no one struggles and i hate that that no one struggles they show the end part of the struggle they don't show the process and i think i said that in a video as i said hunting is a marathon it's not a fucking race there's so many things that go wrong i always say that hunting is the worst thing going wrong in the worst way the very worst possible time that's the real truth of what we fucking do like embrace the horror you know like and i just hate seeing the skewed really narrow vision of we never fail. We always harvest. Nothing ever goes wrong. Do you think that the, the outdoor media industry that produces the outdoor channel and, and sportsman's channel and all that stuff, do you think they're the ones to blame for all this? They are the biggest offenders, I would say, because um, if we're going to be real. But, I mean, at the same time, you have to look at that from a business perspective. You know, no one's going to fucking watch a show where someone doesn't get anything. But a really good example of that is, um, is Meteor. You know, they don't harvest every single episode, but you'll see stuff and you'll see the process and you'll see it from start to finish. You know, they may be there three weeks, but you're getting every, you know, the digestible bits of that whole process in a condensed form within an hour TV show. And so I really fucking love what they do over there because, and it, I love how mainstream it is and that people are like, now it's kind of like, you know, guys like Joe Rogan, you know, people always say, say shit about that, but like, you know, He's a big part of why people are into hunting because he's so close to Steven Ranella and that, you know, that pushes people toward that just because they want to see what he's interested in. And so then you have this whole new generation of people that are like, okay, I want to fucking hunt. And they're, they're seeing it the correct way, I guess. If they're if depicted, if it were depicted a correct way, it would be like that, you know, versus like, well, fuck, let's go watch or Red Arrow is another good example. You know, Kip Campbell shoots does and he's proud of shooting does. I fucking love that. Right. No offense, but like watching a fucking episode of Buck Commander where everybody succeeds. You know, one guy might not get anything, but everybody else, you know, in a high fence pretty much. But yeah, pretty know, much. That's a lot cooler to me to watch that than 
everybody slaying whitetails left and right because it's not realistic. Right. I definitely think that's why uh, YouTube has become such a thing in the outdoor industry is because they want to see the whole process. They want to see you get in your truck and start it up and you get a cup of coffee and talk about what you're about to do on the drive there and that sort of thing. And then you may not see nothing but a squirrel or something that day and they show that and then, you know, the, the walk back out or whatever. I think that's why YouTube's become such a popular thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like the hunting is, I, John Krakauer wrote this book into thin air. It's about Mount Everest. And he's like, you know, climbing a mountain is not about getting to the top. It's about how much pain you can take. Cause you have to sit at Everest for like three months to get there at this time. You did at least. And he's like, it's about how much pain you can take. How much, how long can you really stay up there? Cause you can go down whenever you want, but are you going to stay up there enough to get to the peak? And I think that had this very, very reflective of hunting. Hunting is a fucking struggle. It is not easy. It is not a walk in the park. And I hate when that happens for first time hunters where it just is easy because half of them don't want to hunt anymore because they don't appreciate the struggle. Like hunting is a, like, I can't stress that enough. It's just a fucking struggle. It is the struggle bus. Like you're so many hardships, so many things going wrong, but you're learning left and right because of all the failures that surround you. You think I'd have like four 200 inch deer behind me, all the failures I've had, (laughs) but you know, especially when, you know, you know, the public, the public land hunting thing has become such a big thing in the last few years. And I think, you know, just because people understand that the challenges of, of hunting on public land, and then you got guys like the hunting public guys that do a turkey tour and they literally post a video like every single day and it's shown them, you know, the struggles they may not, they may have as being absolute turkey killing machines. Yeah. But they've done so much for public. You know, it used to be you get shit on for hunting public. Now it's cool. Like, <laughs> oh, right. what was that when I was growing up? Fuck. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, I, I definitely appreciate you, you coming on and uh, talking some bullshit with me. It's been, been oh, fun man. to almost kick back a little bit, you know. Sometimes, I wouldn't say I'm uptight, but, you know, I look at it as a um, – trying to be professional, you know, and then having an episode like this where we just kick back and make fun of each other or whatever, you know, make fun of people and the, the yeah. thoughts and, that they have. I think it's pretty fun, man. Yeah. No, that's, it's my favorite thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, well, uh, tell everybody where they can uh, find you at on social. Um, just the hunt critic, just one word, all lowercase on TikTok, on Instagram, YouTube, but don't go subscribe. because There's nothing on there. Uh, you're not going to find anything. Uh, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. It's all the same. Oh yeah, and Snapchat. I forgot about Snapchat. Snapchat. I saw that you recently jumped on the the Go Wild. Yeah. <laughs> how did that go? <laughs> Not how I thought it would go. Um, I said I reposted. I didn't know this. Um, I reposted a video of mine and I said the word fuck, and everybody and their mother had a fit that I said the word fuck, and so it got to the point. Well, here's the funny part: is that Brad Luttrell. Yeah, he, he so backed you up. And yeah, he's the <laughs> founder and CEO of this app. And these people are bitching back and forth. This is family friendly. Well, this is, you know, language, 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 language. And it just kept going and going and going and going. And I'm like, damn, you know, I didn't even see it till like three days after and all of that. <laughs> I just didn't look. And uh, it got so bad to the point that they, at, like, they added Brad. And Brad was like, yeah, he didn't do anything wrong. So uh, get over it. And I was like, man, that's got to fucking suck. Like, I didn't even know the days after. Otherwise, I'd been, like, rubbing it in somebody's face, like, get fucked. But, you know. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, uh, uh, you can find uh, Blue River Bow Hunting on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Go Wild, just about anywhere you can find uh, find the content. And uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I do a lot of content on there. And uh, I appreciate everybody for uh, checking us out, man. Everybody have a good day.